Welcome to What is Statistics, Part 3. We've been working through this definition of statistics, which uh, was proposed by Jesse Arnold, which I really like. And we've talked about the process in the previous video, so if you haven't looked at that, you might want to go back and look at that before watching this one. Because in this video, we're going to cover decisions. So, here there are three sort of main types of decisions. Now, there's lots and lots of other types, but we're going to focus on three. One is parameter estimation, two is hypothesis testing, and three is prediction. Okay, these will cover about 90% of most people's types of decisions they're going to make. Now, note, I will put down here, there are lots of other types of decisions, and you can take entire graduate courses on decision theory and decision analysis. So by no means is this comprehensive to everything that you can do. So just keep that in mind as we go through this, that this is the beginning of it. Uh, so for parameter estimation, you have a question. The question is, I wonder what the value of theta might be, where theta is some population quantity. Okay, so it's a population parameter. It belongs to the population, not to a sample, right? And we're making these questions before we ever see any data, okay? So we're going to say, I wonder what the value of this might be. There's no idea what the value might be ahead of time, and there's no reference to compare it to. And when we have this type of question, the typical sort of answer that goes along with it is a confidence interval. And the reason I'm putting these two together, these ideas together, is so that as long as you understand what type of question you ask, you should understand what kind of answer you're looking for. Okay. A lot of people don't really keep that in mind. Okay. Hypothesis testing. This question is, I wonder if the value of theta is, okay, and then there's, I have an, a question mark here. Well, theta, again, is a population parameter, so it's something that belongs to the population, not your sample. And there's usually a reference that you're comparing it to, and we're going to call that theta sub zero or theta naught, okay? You have a reference. I wonder if the value of theta might be equal to that. Okay, I wonder if the value of theta might be less than that. I wonder if the value of theta might be greater than that. And of course, not equal falls in there as well. And when you do this type of question, if you say, I wonder what the value is, or I wonder if it exceeds some limit, I wonder if it's below some limit, uh, the typical type of inference that you're going to make off of this is a hypothesis test. And the reason how you know you did a hypothesis test is you're going to end up with a p-value someplace. So keep that in mind. So when you're working through this type of question, I wonder what the value of theta is, or I wonder if the value of theta is, I'm going to get a p-value. I wonder what the value of theta is, I'm going to get an interval. So they're very different types of questions. Okay, and then prediction is, uh, I wonder what a future value of X might be. Okay, X is the thing you're measuring. I don't know, a fish, a dog, uh, nitrogen in the atmosphere. I don't know. But what a future value might be, one that I haven't witnessed yet. Okay, so X is not a population parameter. We're going to actually take and say it's a member of the population, but it's definitely not the population. Here we have no idea what the value might be. There's no reference to compare it to. And the goal is to understand what a new value might look like. And the typical type of inference here is what's called a prediction interval. And if you're in business, they're really interested in prediction, right? I wonder how much I'm going to sell. Why do I need to know how much I'm going to sell? Because I need to make a decision of how much am I going to buy in order to be able to sell that amount. Okay, and that's a, one of the examples of a more complicated decision that we're not talking about. But notice that prediction is involved in that sort of decision. Okay, so decisions. It's important to understand which decision you're trying to make. I see so often that people don't know which one they're trying to make, and they blend all three of them together. Get an idea of which one you're trying to do, and then that will help you do the right procedure. So... Um, I said here, not understanding which decision you're trying to make will lead to the incorrect experiment analysis, and it should be inference there instead of experiment again. Um, people use confidence intervals for hypothesis testing, and that's even taught in classes, but it only works if it's a two-sided test. If you're doing a one-sided test, like something is below a limit, then the confidence interval doesn't work. 
Okay, people not understanding why a p-value is provided. I see this all the time. I get papers to review, and they make some statement, and there's a p-value there. I'm like, what's the p-value for? What are they testing? They never mentioned it. People just put stuff down because they think they're supposed to. Confidence intervals used as prediction intervals. That's quite often the case, and you'll find that confidence intervals are way narrower than prediction intervals. And there's a good reason for that, which we're not going to talk about right now. And also, you'll see hypothesis tests used when predictions are of interest. So just keep that in mind. You need to really nail down what your question is, what your decision you're trying to make. Once you have that, then you have a path to go forward, and you know what the answer that you're looking for looks like. Whether it'll be an interval or a p-value, you'll at least know that ahead of time. All right, so we're back to what is statistics. We've talked about the process, and we've talked about three types of decisions that cover most everything. Now, the next thing is uncertainty, and our next video will be rather short because I'm going to refer you to something that's more bigger and more complete because there'll be no way to cover all of uncertainty in one video. All right, so see you there.